now for more on where this bill stands in the Senate. We're joined by Republican Senator from Tennessee and member of the Senate Banking, Foreign Relations and Appropriations Committee, Bill Haggerty. Senator Haggerty, thank you for being here. Let's pick up where Chad left off. The title of the bill, the Inflation Reduction Act. How do you see it? Well, the Penn Wharton modeling team has dug into this deep. This has zero positive impact on inflation. In fact, it's more likely than not to increase inflation. I call it the Income Reduction Act. That's exactly what's going to happen because they're talking about massive tax increases. When you increase taxes on American corporations, where do you think those costs get passed on? It comes through in prices on the American public. They continue to wage war on the oil and gas industry here in America, making us less competitive as a nation, making it harder and harder for the average person to make ends meet. You think about the pain we're feeling at the pump. There's been minor relief, but still, we're at record high gas prices since Joe Biden took office. You look at people in my home state of Tennessee, we drive to work, we are feeling the pain every day. This will not address inflation, but it's going to add a lot more pain. And when you think about this $80 billion that they're adding to IRS enforcement, Griff, come on, the people over $400,000 a year have an army of accountants and lawyers already working for them. They're coming after the middle class here in America. That's exactly what they've got to do. They've got a spending problem. Where are they going to get their revenue? They're coming after the middle class in America. Well, Sen it. Senator, I, I want to just, uh, I'm not sure if you were able to hear Lucas Tomlinson, our White House correspondent. He played this soundbite of President Biden saying that basically, mark my words, a George H.W. Bush reference that taxes will not be raised on anyone making $400,000 or less. Do you believe that is a moment that President Biden will regret? I think he's going to regret it, and all the analysis shows that taxes will go up, prices will go up, and everyone is going to be impacted throughout the chain. And I think the burden of the pain, the vast majority of the pain, is going to be felt on the middle class here. Senator, let's talk about this jobs report and sort of fold it in to this mm -hmm. conversation about Americans feeling pain. Jobs are up, unemployment's down, so there's perhaps some debate still about whether we're in a recession. Where do you see, I mean, what's your reaction to this jobs report and where do you see the economy heading in the next 60 days? And what the jobs report tells us that is that the labor market is tightening and people are coming out of the labor force. That's very discouraging. You have to go back to pre-pandemic levels and say, is our economy back as strong as it was then? Griff, indeed, it is not. And in fact, what the Biden administration is doing is taking every step they can to weaken our economy and make us less competitive. So we're not where we need to be. We've got this Orwellian process going on right now where you have technically two quarters of GDP negative growth. That means you're in a recession. They're going to war to try to rename that, saying it's not a recession session now. Again, the Biden approach here is all about messaging and not about substance. And the substance, inflation, a weaker economy, and a less competitive America. But the White House senator saying that essentially because of the 22 million jobs recouped since the pandemic and the strength of the economy that come midterms, their plan will proven to have been successful. I think the midterms are going to prove painful for the Democrats. Uh, as the evening goes on here into the, the weekend, you're going to see Republicans fighting tooth and nail with the Democrats because every policy embedded in this reconciliation process is going to weaken America, drive inflation up, and make opportunity less for our children and grandchildren. As the American public sees this, I think they're going to realize that come November, there needs to be a dramatic change, and the House and the Senate is exactly where that should happen. We're going to take control back in both the House and the Senate in November, and that'll be the message the White House needs to hear. Senator, let me change gears a little bit because we had a big trip by Speaker Pelosi to Taiwan this mm. past week. What do you see is the takeaway? Did that benefit uh, the U.S.'s position with regards to China? Well, with respect to our position regarding China, we need to be strong. That's what China understands. It's not words. It's not press releases. It's actual strength and presence in the region. But I'll tell you what's going on there, Griff. What you've got going on in China is a domestic problem. Their economy is weak. What Xi Jinping is trying to do is divert the attention of domestic voters. He's got the Chinese Communist Party Congress coming up this fall. He's got to get reelected. So he's trying to burnish his image as a strong man right now. His audience is domestic. He's doing this to make himself appear strong. He's using Nancy Pelosi's visit as an excuse. But make no mistake, this is really aimed at a domestic audience there so that Xi Jinping can stay in power. What we need to be doing as Americans is continuing to posture ourselves in the right direction there, strengthening our position in that region and make sure that we are building our defense capabilities, not weakening them. If you look at the Biden administration's proposed budget, the Senate had to step in and step it up because the Biden administration wanted to actually defund the military in the face of this. Do these increasing, escalating tensions hurt 
our trade abilities with China? I mean, there's a lot of moving parts here, Senator. And so did we perhaps put ourselves at a weaker position in terms of negotiations when it comes to things like semiconductors and other things? I think what we've got to do is st stay the line here, Griff. We hear talk coming out of the Biden administration that they want to release the tariffs now to remove pressure on China for what? For nothing. I was U.S. ambassador to Japan when we imposed the tariffs. That did not cause inflation. Inflation was at 1.4 percent uh, when, when Biden came into office. It's taken off since then because of domestic policies, not because of our tariff policies. We need to keep the pressure on China at every turn. And again, I'd say this. We've got to continue to build our strength, build our posture and our momentum. It's not just words and press releases. It's deeds that matter to the Chinese. And Senator, just in the 20 seconds or so we have left, I know Kentucky has been at the center of the flooding disaster, but your state is well also getting hit. How are Tennesseans doing? Look, ten Tennesseans are in much better shape than Kentuckians right now. We suffered dramatically last year with floods and, and storms. The, the governor in Tennessee has already allowed uh, National Guard to move in. We're coming to the aid of our friends in Kentucky. My heart goes out to the families there. You know, 35 plus people have already lost their lives. Uh, we're very concerned about our neighbors. We're very concerned about the region. But Tennesseans are coming to the aid. That's why we're called the Volunteer State, Griff. And we are keeping them in our prayers. Senator Bill Haggerty, thank you for taking time today. Check in with us, if you will. I think you're in for a long day and night. Indeed. Thank you, Senator. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.